Okay. All right, well, this is Mary Peabody with the UVM Extension New Farmer Series, and tonight we're going to be talking with a colleague of mine from Nebraska, Connie Hancock, and the subject is going to be building your online presence. And Connie, are you there? I certainly am, Mary. Okay. And I'm guessing you know how to advance the slides. There's the little arrows up at the top. If you get stuck, just give a shout. I certainly do. Oh. I can. OK, we'll do, Mary. OK, great. Well, thank you so much, Mary. OK. Thank you so much, Mary, for inviting me to participate in the um, New Farmer Series. It's an exciting opportunity for me to be able to do this um, virtually. Um, this is something that we have um, done here in Nebraska a couple of times in terms of helping folks think about their online presence. Because as they, as they become more new tools and applications for small businesses to use to reach new audiences, we need to really consider those strategies in, in building that um, web, um, online presence. Because it really is more than just your website as we will look at some of the, the tools that are available to us. I saw this uh, quote this week, and I wanted to share that with you. In social, and we can, we can call it social media, social networking, people do not talk about your brand. They talk about what they think of your brand. And that's really the big difference, because people are talking about you. They're talking about your business. They're talking about your product and the kind of customer service that you have available. And all sorts of um, reviews and recommendations. And so you need to, to understand that. And you, um, we'll show, show you some ways that you can um, find out what people are, are saying about you. The whole concept of an online strategy is really an architect. Um, architecture kind of a, a process in thinking about what tools do I need, what tools do I need to use, and how am I going to put that all together to build the kind of strategy and to reach the audience that I'm looking um, for um, in expanding my opportunities uh, to do business with other people. So we're going to talk about a couple of different strategies tonight. One is the actual marketing strategy, uh, those online applications and tools and how people are using them and what people are using. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the content strategy because that becomes the reason why people come to your website. It's for the content, whether that be product content and descriptions um, or the kinds of useful information that you're sharing with people. And so those are the two different um, components of your online strategy is really marketing and content. And so as we look at who is doing what online, um, there, the predictions for social network users um, ha have increased since 2008, but the prediction is that it will increase even more in the uh, upcoming years of those folks that are currently uh, using social networks to explore, to do searches, um, and to find um, out about new products and new business. So Connie, can I interrupt you for just a second? What are they doing? Yeah, um, can you just say a few words about what you mean when you're talking about social networks? Sure. The, the kinds of social networking and the social media tools that um, right now are the most popular, and I think that this next slide kind of goes into that, Mary, is um, Facebook and YouTube and MySpace and Twitter. And these are applications that um, help you reach out to a whole new audience in being social. You know, uh, when I grew up, we talked about the party line. And um, on our telephone, we had a party line. And there were 10 people on the party line. And if you wanted to share information, you did that through the party line. Well, the party line is no longer available to us um, except through some of these applications. And so as we think about Facebook and the 300 friends that I have on Facebook, and if, I, if I'm making recommendations or comments about a particular business or a product or a service that I've just um, 
had access to the 300 friends that follow me on Facebook now know about a particular business or product. And one that I'll give as an example is the uh, Ricky and Lucy's greenhouse that I uh, frequent here in my area. And I was, you know, um, telling folks that I had gone out to uh, Ricky and Lucy's and, and purchased product and, and whatnot. And, and of course, this was a time of year to be doing that. But the 300 friends then also were allowed to um, see that the, that I had gone to Ricky and Lucy's. Well, my recommend that's sort of a recommendation then for other folks to well maybe I, I haven't been to that business maybe I need to go and explore what they have to offer and what kind of product they have and and um, and so that's how that viral marketing that social networking that party line happens in today's world is through my friends and then Mary through your friends because you're a friend of mine and now your friends also know about this greenhouse. And it, and it may not be that you're going to come to Nebraska today, but in the future as you drive and travel, that may be a destination place for you to um, explore. See, great. Does that yes, help? very much. Um, Okay, and and that's the same kind of a concept with Twitter. The people that follow um, each other on Twitter are also looking for that kind of information and those kinds of recommendations of resources and services. Um, a, a recent um, industry report from the Social Media Marketer uh, just came out, and what they're saying is that one in five people are actively actively use. Um, these types of, of uh, social networks. And 75% of those folks have a company Facebook page, um, which I think is sort of interesting that, that we've got a lot of small businesses out there actually using this. Now, one in five, um, there's four uh, businesses that aren't using it and aren't reaching those, um, those folks. But 75% hmm. but of the, the folks that were interviewed do have a Facebook page. Um, so there, what I'm saying is there's opportunity to explore that as a small business owner. Great. 69% um, of those people were actually posting um, updates on a regular basis. And so that's, um, and by what we mean by a regular basis is uh, maybe once a day, uh, maybe once a week, depending upon your business. Um, depending upon what's going on, you may want to post a couple times a day. 57% um, felt like they were building a network of new people um, by utilizing these social media tools. 54% um, were actually monitoring the feedback. And so as people were making comments about their product and their business, they were monitoring that and they were making comments back to those people. Um, because as we look at how feedback happens, oftentimes there are negative comments. And so we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware if there is an unhappy customer. And so we can help um, defer that and um, um, make comment back or follow up with that customer so that we can make it right. And that will be way um, more positive for you as a business owner if you attempt to make it right than um, by ignoring that negative comment. Yeah, I hadn't actually thought of that. Um, because we know we can't make everybody happy. Yeah, well, we, we, we know that we can't make everybody happy, but at the same time we also need to um, do our best in, in that. As, as most customer service uh, programs say, we, the customer is always right. 39% um, of the folks actually maintain a blog. And so as small business owners, that's a tool that you may want to consider is keeping a blog and, and having new content uh, fresh on a blog on a regular basis. 26% um, tweet about their areas of uh, expertise. And so Twitter is a, a channel that folks are using and making comments on and, and checking out what industry folks are, are talking about and, and saying. And so that's um, useful information to know that people really do use these tools. And these are the reasons why um, building that strong network of customer base and, and new markets um, is important. 
Um, I think it's also important that as we do um, searches for the, the search providers, um, who do we need to really think about and focus on? Uh, Google, uh, Bing is the new MSN, um, Microsoft search engine, uh, Yahoo are the three, they're the three big search providers. Um, Facebook is also amongst the top five, as well as AOL. And so as we create content, and as we create our web pages for search engine optimization, then we need to think about these five tools um, and five um, providers. We'll get into the blueprint now. Um, as we're creating the kinds of strategies, whether it's marketing strategy or a content strategy, in my mind, there's three different medias or mediums that we need to think about. The first one is your owned media, the things that you control, the things that you own. Um, we need to think about the paid media. What is it that you purchase or have paid for um, in terms of advertising? Um, similar to what we do in traditional marketing, but uh, this is the online kinds of media. And then what, we, what is it that we have earned? And that's a result of our owned media, the paid media, and, our, and how we've engaged with our customers. The first one then is our owned or claimed media. And these are the things like your website. Have you made your website mobile ready? Um, because as we look around, um, many people are getting information on their mobile sites. And if you have a highway running through your town or close by your place of business, you need to make sure that you have your information on a mobile ready site um, so that people can find you as they are traveling. Um, a blog is another um, owned component of your um, strategy. A Twitter account, a Facebook page, a Flickr account, um, and Flickr, if for those of you that aren't aware of uh, what Flickr is, it's an actual photography piece. It's a, a sharing of photos. And you can actually do commercial um, sales on Flickr, but there's a lot of content and searches that go on uh, based on photography. And a lot of our small businesses are using that, um, the photos that they have on their website for product description. If they are of quality, people are uploading those to Flickr and creating their own channel, um, their own business channel um, to upload photos and share with people uh, different product or different images of the location, that kind of thing. Um, YouTube channel, uh, videos are also one of the top searches. Um, I think there's several different statistics out there, but um, a thousand YouTube videos a minute are uploaded. I mean, the number of videos are incredible. And so think about you, um, using that as a tool to share information about yourself and about your product, your demonstrations, whatever. And then of course map locations um, and making sure that you have claimed your spot on Google Map or that um, you're on uh, MapQuest uh, because those are the tools that people use um, as they um, map out their uh, travels to different locations. And if they can't find you, um, it's going to be um, tragic for you. Um, it builds a foundation. What this does is you're able to control those, those things. Um, you own those channels. And um, you're able to contribute to your portfolio because of that. And what this all does is really lays a foundation for the earned value of your business and your product and the kinds of things that you want um, people to know about you. It also builds a bridge. Um, between that social experience to you and your place of destination. And as we think about where communities um, are at and active, it's an ecosystem. You know, it, it, it does require you to engage though. Um, how, when, where, and to what extent, that's going to be your decision. Um, but these communities are out there and we need to be active in them as small business owners. Connie, I'm losing a little bit of your audio. One of the Did first, you? One of the things. 
Yep. Are you there? I am. I was I was losing a little bit of your audio. It sounded like you moved away from the phone or something. No, I'm. Um, no, I did okay, not. Okay, that's much better now. Whatever's. Uh, whatever happened. Yeah. Happened. Um. <laughs> the other, the other piece of this is um, when I talked about the maps is doing the local search. And um, what I what I want folks to do is after the the webinar here is to actually go out to um, Google or Yahoo, and in the search um, bar, type in uh, pizza in um, Vermont, or in a, in your in your community in Vermont, or farmers markets in Vermont, and see what pops up. Um, and what I want you to make sure then is that if you're not on those maps, there are pieces of there's a business center in each of these um, search engines where you can go and actually then place your business and claim your spot on Google. And then from that, what you can do is also um, create the link to your website if you have one. You can also create the um, image of yourself and, and put a description about your business and what you have to offer and your hours of business and the actual physical location. Because what we've ha what we've seen happen is many of our businesses. Um, we had one here in the Sand Hills that was actually about 25 miles off of where they were actually physically located. Google does the best they can, and we need to make sure that that it's accurate. And so we can claim that spot. And if you're not on Google Maps, you can actually create that. Um, this local business center, if you do a search for local business center on Google, this, will, this um, image will appear. You can add a new business or update a data file. And that's pretty important to do as people use those tools, Google and MapQuest and Yahoo, um, to find different locations and to find about you. You may be surprised that it, um, if you are already located on the map um, of what the reviews are. Um, many businesses that when we do workshops and, and programs are amazed at how people have actually already um, made a review about their different um, their business or their product. Um, and so it's interesting to see that as, as we uh, go through and do those local searches, and people do make comments. I am amazed. Um, there's a variety of other tools out there as well um, in terms of recommendations and, and reviews that we'll get to, but um, the Google Maps and the local search is critical to have, helping people find where you're located. The paid media then is the, the stuff that we pay for, uh, pay per clips. Uh, sponsorships, um, display ads. Uh, these are going to complement and reinforce what you are already doing. Um, but you are going to have to make sure you have a budget for it um, because these are not necessarily um, cheap. And make sure that you know what you are doing. Read the fine lines as you get into the paid media um, of doing advertising online. The earned media then is the stuff about um, results of what you've owned, um, what you've paid for, and some of those participatory programs that you've been involved with, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or um, a blog. And um, so think about then um, taking some time and finding out what people are actually saying about you. 84% um, of Americans say that online reviews influence their purchasing decision. That's a huge amount of people who actually prefer taking peer reviews over um, any other kind of influence when they make their decisions. Um, you might want to check out your reputation on Yelp, um, City Search, Yahoo Local, Google Maps, Angie's List, TripAdvisor, eOpinions, Twitter. These are just a few of the review and recommendation sites that are available to us um, 
in today's world. And so do a search for yourself. Do a search for your business and find out what people are saying. We've had comments from very negative to very positive. Um, but this, you know, I, I did a search for a steakhouse in a local community and the, um, the particular restaurant came up and it had several different reviews from people. Now these folks didn't have, uh, at the time, a website. They didn't have a Facebook account. But they had a reputation online that they weren't even aware of because people are making these reviews about us, um, which is great. But we need to know about that. And so check out your reputation on these various um, websites and review and recommendation sites. We oftentimes hear, how do we do it all? How do we do this? And what we recommend is to take one tool, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, really explore that option, um, explore that um, application, and do one um, social media tool at a time. Um, it, it, can, it can overwhelm you in terms of time, but what some of the research is showing is that new folks, folks new to the social media environment, spend about an hour a week um, using that tool until they become much more familiar with it, much more experienced in terms of using um, that, providing content, thinking about how to deliver that content um, online. And so an hour a week, we surely can find one hour a week to explore those options for our business um, because we know that we're going to be able to reach a broader audience and reach a new audience that w won't, would not have known about us prior to um, us being on a, a social network. Um, there are a couple of other tools that you might want to consider. Uh, Google Alerts is one tool that um, you can actually get email updates from Google Alerts uh, based upon the search terms that you put into the alert. So if you go to um, the website here and type in your business name, your business product, um, some of the search keywords that you would search for your business or that you've incorporated into your website, um, click those there and create an alert. And once you've done that, Google then will email you, whether it's daily or weekly, it's, that's your choice, um, any updates of those keywords. And so um, if, if there's a, a comment or a blog comment or something made about your business that somebody has done, it will be, you will get an alert about that if that's the search term that you've used in, that, um, in Google Alerts. Um, Twitter also has a search um, component. And so if you type in search.twitter.com, you can also see what people are saying about your product. And it may not be your product specifically, but it might be something in general about your product that will give you ideas on how to use those tools or ideas about what people are saying and wanting and needing that you might have to offer to them. Um, so both of those are, are really key factors in, in helping you keep updated about what people are saying and, and doing. Um, so online. Connie, I have a question about the uh, yeah. the Twitter search. I've done I've done the Google uh, the Google search, and I I understand how those reports come through. But does Twitter do the same thing? Do they send you a compiled report, or is it just a, a summary of every mention on Twitter? over a period of time, or how does that work? Right. The Twitter search is going to be, you're going to have to do that more often, Mary. It's not going to actually come okay. to you. Um, but that, that would be a, a search during a particular period okay. of time. So, yeah, it's not, it's not as handy as the Google Alerts where they actually come Great. to you. Great. Okay. Um, the marketing strategy is, um, something that we all need to think about. And um, that includes the social networking stuff um, as well. And we do need to think about that because that is where today's business 
uh, world is at and where people are getting information, they're communicating, they're doing, um, it's amazing to me the number of people that, that utilize those tools. And so as you think about who your customer is, you need to research out information about that customer, um, determine the time commitment that you have. And it may at the beginning only be once a week. Um, there are businesses in today's world who have actually hired a social media manager um, to do this on a part-time or full-time basis. Um, that may not be where you're at today, and that's okay. Um, but we need to explore those options um, because most of these tools that we've talked about today are free. Um, Facebook, Twitter, um, blogs, those are all free tools available to us, and we need to take advantage of those um, as long as we can. There are some paid um, components of all of that as well, but let's focus on the free stuff at this point in time. Um, it's a great way to build relationships and, and, um, and your reputation. Um, and so we need to think about um, incorporating that into um, what you do on a regular basis. And adding value to conversations that are relevant to your business. If as you do a Google search or as you do um, a review and recommendation search or a local search, and you're finding people are in a conversation about um, the type of service that you're providing, and you have some bit of advice um, or some bit of wisdom that you'd like to share, um, join in the conversation. Um, don't make it all about you. Um, but share that so that you can build that reputation with folks. Um, oftentimes it's good to give away something free in order to um, get people hooked to then want to be part of a, um, the business that you're involved in. Um, analyze. There's all kinds of tools out there to, to think about analyzing uh, what marketing worked well, what marketing didn't work well, uh, what didn't work at all. Are there any standout reasons? Um, Facebook has an analytic component to it. You can incorporate um, Google Analytics into Facebook. Um, you, if you have not already, you need to think about using um, Google Analytics or an analytic tool um, on the back side of your website because you can get a wealth of information about where people are coming from, what keywords they're searching for, what um, um, part of the country they're coming from. I mean, it, it can pinpoint the ISP um, uh, number of where they're located. And so you can then even begin to target on a variety of other ways once you've identified where um, your folks are coming from uh, when they come actually to your website or even Facebook. Um, so as you think about that marketing strategy, ask yourself, some of the questions. What are my goals? Is, are my goals to have higher profit? Well, I, I would imagine that would be one of them. Is it to increase my customer base? Is it to uh, go international? And so what are those marketing goals um, that you've identified? And who is that online target market? Is it as a particular age group? Is it a particular type of folk that um, are nutrition oriented or health oriented or um, who is that market and, and really then begin to um, understand that group of folks? How do you plan to increase that target market? And so that comes into what are the online tools that you're going to incorporate in the next six months? And give yourself a timeline because we can put this stuff off pretty, pretty regular as we're busy with doing the kinds of things that we do on a regular basis, uh, we need to incorporate one more thing into, into your to-do list. Um, what's your call to action? And you, mean, you need to think about that call to action on a fairly regular basis because what, it may ha what you might have today may be different tomorrow. And how does your online marketing strategy fit into your traditional marketing strategy? is you're still going to do some of the print media. You're still going to do maybe some radio spots. You're, you're still going to have business cards. Um, but how does that online marketing strategy fit into 
the traditional marketing strategy. And make sure that you have some of your online um, addresses on your business card or on your brochure so that people can find you then um, in the online world as well. Um, I asked one business owner once, um, he handed me his, his business card and I said, so what is your website address? And he looked at me and he looked at the business card and he says, we'll be changing our business cards because they didn't have it on, on them at the time, <laughs> which is, is something you would automatically think about, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, how do you plan to incorporate all of this into your marketing strategy? And so just really think about those things and ask yourself those questions as um, you put together that marketing plan for yourself um, and incorporate those various components. The content strategy is a little bit harder. Um, I, writing for me is not something that comes natural. And so I have to really think about this. I have to take time. Um, and so one of the first things that we need to ask ourselves is what is our content purpose? Um, is it to build the bridge between audience needs and business requirements? Is it to share a new product line? Is it to build our reputation? Um, what is that purpose of providing content? Um, is it to share recipes with products that we're um, you know, involved with, whether it's um, the dairy industry or the cheese or um, the farmer market kind of thing, and, and how can we get peop more people to purchase that product based on the fact that they can also have awesome um, end results when it comes to the table. Um, identify those key themes and messages and then focus on that on a regular basis. And, and those are not easy tasks to do, uh, but you guys are the ones who are most passionate about your business and about your product, and you're the ones who use your product and business on a regular, on a daily basis. And so think about how to incorporate that and convert that to the customer, the end user. Um, consider some recommended topics um, as you put this content strategy together. And then always, always, always think about that met metadata and the keywords and relate that back to your content. And as you begin to write, make sure that those keywords and keyword phrases are incorporated into um, all of the content that you put online um, because that's the way people will find you over and over and over again is based on those keywords. And that just enhances your search engine optimization. Um, the more that you can incorporate those uh, keywords and keyword phrases into your blog, on your website, um, in your Twitter feeds that you create, um, on the Facebook page as you write the um, article uh, that you're going to put there. And so that search engine optimization is something that will follow you throughout um, all of the tools and all of the applications that you've incorporated into your online strategy. And, and again, it goes back to how do I do all this? How do I, how do I have time to do that? Um, I like to look at it as in creating one piece with many deliverables. And that's kind of the, the magic about all of the tools that are available to us. As we, as we write the content for the blog, um, hopefully you've incorporated an RSS feed or a, a real simple syndication feed so that it goes to my feed reader. Um, so that I know that you've updated your blog. Um, again, that comes to me when I open up, up my feed reader. Um, announce that you've um, put something new on the blog in your Twitter feed. And that can automatically go to your Facebook. And so you've done one, one update on your blog. You've done one update on your Twitter Facebook feed. And that potentially goes to 300, 500 people in a short amount of time. Um, you can also think about a newsletter in that as well. So as you write the blog, the newsletter is, is updated as well, and it goes out to uh, more people that way. So it, 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 we can simplify it as well if we think about it in terms of using all those tools and creating one content and, and uh, delivering them. 
the second part of that is creating a video that if you if you so choose to go through the video component and many of the tools, the equipment that's out there today is YouTube ready. And so you can easily take a simple YouTube video of of uh, the new plants or the new animals or uh, the process that you've you've used and upload that to to YouTube. You can take that same episode and use it to for your iTunes podcast, um, or just put post a link on your website that the video is there. And so again, it's many different ways to deliver that one piece of, of video. Um, and talk about different things, um, not just about yourself, but make it interesting. And you want to share things about yourself and about your business, but talk about some of the new things, the different things, um, so that people will want to come back and, and um, listen or read um, the content that you've created. There's the three E's of social media. Um, Jay Berkowitz uh, does the 10 Golden Rules to Internet Marketing, and he's uh, one of the guys that I follow um, on a podcast and a blog. And he really does focus on the three things that people are really wanting as they come to websites, as they come to blogs. Um, how can we educate people? How can we educate people not only about our industry that we're in, uh, but also the product that we have and how it can make their lives better. Uh, we always need to incorporate the benefits of our product and our service into whatever content that we create. So think about educating people. Um, the second part is how do we engage them? How do we engage them in those conversations? Um, and so the social media tools are available to us. Um, the one uh, business that's close to me that uses Facebook and has a number of followers is uh, Cabela's. And um, it's always interesting on Monday morning the question that they pop to people on their Facebook page. Um, I noticed that you went turkey hunting. Or many of you said you were going to go turkey hunting this last weekend. Tell me about your hunt. And there will be anywhere between 100 and 200 comments of people turkey hunt over the past weekend. Um, think about how you can incorporate that. Think about how you can engage people in that conversation with your, the product that, that you have. From a farmer's market perspective, what recipe did you try? Um, how did you use our product this weekend? Um, that kind of thing. And then entertaining. Make it fun for people. Um, we're, we live in a world where people expect to have a little bit of entertainment happen and we need to make sure that we incorporate that because people want to feel good about themselves. They want to feel good about buying the product that and, and, and using the service that you have available. And so think about really trying to incorporate that into um, everything that you do. As you think about your profiles, um, think also about the kind, the, the brand and the name that you want. Um, you'll notice I've got a variety of, of names here, but really focus on that um, profile name and use it on everything, whether it's your Twitter, your Facebook, um, your YouTube, um, your blog, and um, so that you ad again identify that reputation and you've, and you've captured the people um, the people's attention about your particular name as you've um, engaged in these um, online social media tools. Um, Mary, any questions, comments? That's sort of the thought process behind building your online presence um, in today's world and thinking about all of the ways that um, our businesses might be able to do that. Okay, great, thanks. Um, I do, I have a couple of questions for you, or, or maybe they're more comments, discussion comments or something, but, um, well, the first one that I, I ask everybody that um, sits with me through one of these sessions is, um, you know, w what are some of the classic mistakes that you see uh, new business owners make in this area, and what would you advise people to avoid doing? 
Um, I think one of the things is relying totally on someone else to create these for you. Um, we've had a lot of, of folks that as they created their website or their Facebook page or um, even their Twitter feed um, have a high school student, or, and, I, and I'm not saying those are bad choices, but have, have someone else create it for having um, a thought behind um, who's administrator. And do we have access to all of those particular um, files, and if this person should leave or the web developer should leave, how am I going to um, continue my website? How am I going to be able to update it? And so I think that's one of the, the major things um, that even the Facebook page, many people have somebody else create it for them, and um, they're not administrator, and so they're sort of left out in the cold with, yeah, I have a Facebook page, but I can't get into it. I, I'm not administrator. Uh -huh. And so make sure that you have at least two or three people as um, administrators and owners of all of that information. Okay. Um, and, and it used to be, I mean, sort of the classic uh, marketing rule of thumb was always, you know, that if somebody loves your business, they might tell one person. If somebody has a bad experience, they'll tell at least seven people. Um, it seems to me that social networking has the potential to really um, uh, magnify that exponentially if you know cuz there are some some mean spirited people out there in the virtual world do you have any tips for um what to do if somebody unfairly criticizes your business or your product well um you know we've seen that in as we do some of our reviews on the local search and i think one way is to um encourage the customers that um have had good experience with you to, to make comments because that's really um, one way to be able to do that. The other way is to um, publicly you know, share or follow up with those folks that have had a bad experience and um, address it straight on. That, you know, I, I apologize. Um, let's make it right. Um, you know, if you really do want to return the product, let's take care of it. I think people have in today's world have a lot better respect of businesses that handle um, negative feedback that way versus just the whole concept of ignoring it. Um, and, and particularly if it's a new management, if a new owner has taken over a particular business, um, share that, that I'm a new manager, please give us a try. Um, you know, we've done XYZ to try to correct um, the wrong that was was made, and um, I, I think that's I think in today's world that's probably a better approach than trying to um, go the other way and either ignore it or make comment negatively towards the. Customer. Yeah, you probably don't want to get into a um, a firefight with with customers online. <laughs> um, what about? Yeah, there, there was a case study about that, and yeah. Go ahead. Well, I, I had read an article about a woman who um, handled everything negatively, and of course, nobody would come back to her business. Um, and it was a, a retail store, and um, and she she didn't like some of the comments people were making, and so she fought back with comments. And <laughs> um, of course, she's no longer in business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't always work so out. That, it's really not a good way to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it did. It didn't work out for her. Okay, so um, another. Uh, well, I had another question, and it just escaped me for a minute. But um, 
Oh, I know what I was going to ask you is um, I've, a couple of businesses in this area at least have started doing um, sort of either Facebook or Twitter campaigns where they offer a special deal to um, some to, to their followers. So basically, there's an incentive for. So, for example, there's a greenhouse that um, is local that does um, that says you know for the first uh, 50 people that come in and say they they saw us on Twitter, we have a special gift and they'll give them a little plant or something. Um, and we have a pizza place who gives away a pizza every week to their Facebook followers. They ask a random question and they ask you to post and then they just randomly pick somebody. Um, do you think those are those are useful ways for people to, to sort of grow their online contact? I, I do. I think that's an excellent way. Um, I think the more that you can engage your followers in ways like that, um, the more that they're going to continue to come back, whether it's online or actually to your brick and mortar store. Um, so I think clever ways like that, Mary, are incredibly important in um, capturing the audience and, and capturing those customers. Okay, so um, do you have any final words for, for folks regarding social media and enhancing their building an online presence for the business? Um, I, I think I heard you say uh, start slow and, and don't take on everything at once. Um, have, a, have a plan, um, you know, and a couple of other tips I know that you included in there, but any other final comments? Um, I don't. I don't think so. I think the biggest one is really think about the tool that you want to use, and um, really get to know that tool uh, very well before you move into other avenues. Because it is a time factor, um, and it can take a lot of time to do it right. And you don't want to. You want to do it right. You want to do quality work as you think about your marketing online strategy. Great. Well, I want to thank you for being here tonight with us. And I know you've had a really long day. I've had a really long day. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, but um, don't hang up just yet, OK? So and for everybody okay. who's watching. Thanks, Mary. And, and good luck to OK. I was just going to say. Good luck to everybody. Yeah, good luck. And uh, just a reminder that we do these um, at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. And so there's always new ones that are being posted. Um, you can get information at our website. And you can download supplemental materials as well. So we'll see you all uh, next month.